generational lack of control in the case of the boomers, millennials, Gen Z, a holistic worldwide view, days of future past. Uh, this one will center on a slide that has a lot of pictures embedded in it and it basically shows the differences between all these uh, generations that I mentioned and the statistical manner in which they affect our American society as well as possibly the ideas that they hold in their head applied abroad to each other etc at all so I won't waste too much time on that basically the older generation is very racist and that's a given so it really falls down on the younger generation to be more tolerant and be more receptive be more open toward uh, the foreign divisions the international communities because we really depend on them overall the militant structure in America will see very robust uh, reform and that's a given because once those people are out of the leadership it'll fall on to the hands of the younger generations and the brand new breed that's a given in any type of econ uh, any type part of the world but specifically because I'm from the US disparity in society new versus old methods doctrines implantations future of nations another uh, slide that has basically a comparison between baby boomers and millennials what their skills are and how they relate to our economy our world socially abroad etc examples of psyop truth versus statistics not to be confused with influence or intermixing of ideals in reference to the previous chart there are very few who think in a way that is shown to be reflective of the older generation as well as the younger generation so not every statistic is always correct and not every chart highlights the general or the individual within the general etc for a, a short course on sociology it's really only an interpretation USA's inflated ego a realistic view we're number one even if sufficient numbers and I'm, I'm quoting for this one from the PSYOP doctrine even if sufficient numbers were to be organized their training would be redacted dot 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 their quality could never come up to the US standards who said this I don't know circa April 22nd 1962 I think that was during JFK uh, the next one focuses on operation paperclip which should serve as the basis to exploit technologies quoting again wherever they may be this is for the better interests of the USA circa the JCS 1963 espionage by the USA traders exposed quote mr. duels then head of the CIA replied we know practically everything about the equipment but offered no specifics so this was alluding to the technology available at the time I only highlighted that to prove a point the focus of this included excerpt is not Alan duels but rather the administration's direction outside of the international treaties and directorates given i.e. the USA went rogue imperialism is different than this a major theme worldwide but exploited many times over by the USA before uh, consulting with outside agencies NGOs circa May 5th 1961 noted that the president's direction with the CIA should make a detailed study and analysis of weaknesses and vulnerabilities which exert control in red countries today the case of the USSR so I guess we all know why the Cold War started yet many people are this is brand new honor or treachery President Kennedy and Chairman Khrushchev Che a defector or deflector the CIA only funded the Contras not their ideological split think US interests he pushed for an offensive against Russian bases for exploitation in the 1960s the excuse kind of like Venezuela today Cuba was getting too close to the USSR the real pretense exploitation pre and post space race at that time technological advancements getting Soviets to the USA under false pretenses only to be jailed and treated as POWs 
circa July 26, 1961. President Kennedy believed and publicly discussed that they, quote, Russians would prove to be a formidable enemy, but a much needed ally, circa August 1961. Unfortunately, the administration at the time did not agree, yet look at the world today. No further commentary needed. To be realistic back then was to be radical. To be realistic today is to be treated as illogical in the USA. We'd rather, as a society, be maybe willfully or blindly ignorant to the fact of where we stand and just pretend that everything is fine. That's the mindset of a large portion of the population. And that's the result of PSYOPs, point on proving. Some things never change. The harsh reality of cooperation worldwide. USA perspective and then reality worldwide. I quote again. We will establish next week in the State Department a psychological warfare group. This will be a full-time group of three or four people charged with the responsibility of assembling all available information on the Sovietization, that's what they called it, of insert country. This was during the Cold War. Repression of human rights, failures of the economy, etc much of which has been classified, putting this information into pamphlets pre-Vietnam and distributing them in Latin America and worldwide, circa September 1st, 1961. Example of PSYOP. Through these principles, though these principles do not only get employed by the USA, understanding the role of national identity during imperialist exploitation is a red flag of what will happen should prudence not be exercised. Dissemination and distortion of activities to exploit area of operations. Modern day, not much has changed except for technology. And I'd like to bring up the point of the wide range of espionage activities being conducted on the civilian sector, as well as the uh, national security sector, Republican, Democrat, business, what have you. Everyone's being surveilled, local and nationally. So the international level has always done this, and everyone's been cool with it. I'm not going to say anything else, but the national and local sectors play a different role. They're supposed to they're supposed to get authorization from these proxies and channels. They're not supposed to do anything without oversight. Doing that is a clear breach of uh, ethic, ethics, efficacy, and efficiency. Keynote, we rely on outside help. Interference and exploitation is hardly the way toward diplomacy. What went wrong? For the former USSR, Latin American countries, German co-op, etc. at all, expanding an open hand to the USA only proved one thing. The country senses its loss in control current day. So why do this again? Maybe if the USA hadn't stepped over everything like a fucking doormat, maybe things would be different. Maybe relations would be better, but they're not present day, the Venezuela situations, it's being said that we Americans sent troops there to spark a coup. Kind of like the Contras. I digress. Considerations. Future of the world. And, uh, yeah, I'm being intercepted right as we speak, but who cares, right? Because the international community is aware. Future of the world and future power dynamics. A realistic view, no bias. Technology will always play a key role. Import and exports will always show control or lack thereof. PSYOPs will always be implemented in any and all countries. However, some people just don't like it, uh, such as myself. I don't like that uh, reiteration of the foreign sector's bad, their enemies, blah, blah, blah. But yet when you study history, and we learned this in school, the USA stepped over every single nation there is to name. And that's what they're teaching here in the USA, so what can you really say? The future will be reliant on, practically, on practicality, younger innovations, and the younger generations. 
What is the difference within the span of the historical context? Power dynamic is re-stratified and the organization in the new world will play a very key role. Think tanks have no use for bias, medium control tech, they will destroy the old and forge the new. It is already happening every second, minute, hour, day, week, month, year, decade, etc. at all. This is good. Why? It brings forth the future of technology, but also the organizational uh, strategic placements of the nations worldwide to ensure that everybody has a chance of prosperity, advancement, and we can collectively come together. Closing statements, future talks, what if, realistic views. First country to develop the ultimate artificial intelligence program, synthetic militant application, uh, analytical supercomputer, and the ultimate EMP tech will forever rule the hierarchies of what we call the world. Uh, I could go on saying more about that, but I think that speaks volumes within itself. So any country that controls technology has the world in the palm of its hand. However, we have organizations that protect us from such things. Maybe the future will be different. Nobody knows. A realistic view of world placement in terms of control. This is not my opinion. I forget. I'll, I'll quote the sources in the bibliography, and it reflected them as, a, as the following. China, Russia, Germany, parts of Latin America, and the USA. The only reason I did not include the Middle East and Israel is because, one, they're in the same region, and two, they're both being exploited by all these countries I named at which the USA is at the forefront. So I didn't want to get into that territory. Anyways. Resources will be used as leverage and pressure points, so uh, I guess plan accordingly. Cashless society will take over only because of progress. I repeat, cashless society will take over only because of progress. Cybernetic implants and versus genetic modifications. The new dawn, there can only be one. As an American, I have come to realize that, well, I am proud of where I live. People ultimately cause much of what renders us to be viewed as the enemy worldwide. Furthermore, our dependence on foreign help shows the, co the cooperation toward diplomatic unity, yet highlights the burden of the USA on the world and its direction in the current state of affairs. So while we're asking for help from all these countries, the general American population still despises and hates these countries at large. They hate China, they hate the Middle East, they hate Germany, they hate Russia, they hate Australia, and they won't say it publicly, but they hate Canada because of their healthcare system. The USA really hates a lot of countries, and I'm not saying that other countries don't hate other countries too, but I live in the USA, so all this is openly talked about. On mainstream media, social media, podcasts, etc., and radio. That brings us to the conclusion of this podcast. And really, you got to ask yourself if, if you're American and you allow these types of things to affect you and change your whole outlook on a set demographic, you're part of the problem. You people will bring the inevitable fall of the USA at large. That separatist ideology has got to go. And if not, we may very well be forced to have it be removed from our worldview as well as our uh, foreign policy. In connection to that, the level of espionage being conducted against the civilian, the level of interceptions have interception of connections happening every day, hour and second, is an act of treason by the U.S. government. Apple devices have some type of uh, exclusivity, as does Samsung, as does Huawei, as etc. There's so many phone companies. However. If there's no present threat, 
And as I've alluded to the fact that when they tap onto somebody's phone, they're largely covering an area because they haven't gotten to the level of actually just tapping one thing or they fail to do so. They would rather spy on the entirety of the community because, hey, if we're getting, if, if they're getting data, as they would say, on one person, why not just get the data from everybody? Make everybody uh, just blindly allow it to happen. And it'll come in the form of like a fake cell tower to connect to your network or rogue AP scans, etc. Yeah, and keep in mind this is in a fucking democratic society. Other countries openly admit to this within their countries. The USA lies about it, says it's not true. When people prove it, they're, they're, uh, they're taking like it's not real. And then you present them with accusations and the actual evidence, and then they're like, oh, okay, etc. This is why the uh, cybersecurity in today's world is very important. And we need more oversight from the international sectors, if not from the world, because we're not the only country. And when we keep accusing other countries of espionage, yet, Huawei, you know, since 2010 was being accused of espionage by the USA. What were they doing? What are they doing now? Same thing. I'd like to bring up the point of uh, US study abroad programs. They pick these people to go study abroad to a certain country. They have American phones that they take with them. They bought here and they it has a, a chip in there. When they're abroad, the US is still intercepting their connection. So in develop, what does that translate into? Developing countries that don't have access to state-of-the-art tech will not notice it, but it still happens. So let's say person is at a museum or is near an event where a public leader is talking. The U.S. is all eyes and ears listening. Let's say a clear breach of the international guidelines set forth by many of these organizations. I just felt like addressing that point. This is America was America, what's next? This has been a presentation by Anthony Voltaire and uh, I hope you're having a good evening, good night, or morning depending on what part of the world you're situated in. Thank you.